How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be continuing my Sharks of Summer series. Sharks of Summer is a series I do around here where once a week, at least once during the summer, I'll take a look at a shark movie. And today we're going to be talking about Blue Demon. This is from 2004, directed by Daniel Gornick, and stars Dee Dee Pfeiffer, Randall Bat Batkinoff, and Danny Woodburn. Now, if you guys have paid attention to the last few weeks, uh, this is July, so I'm doing the Red, White, and Blue Shark movies. Two weeks ago, we did Red Water. It's kind of a made-for-TV, okay shark movie. And then after that, we had Great White, a modern movie for Shudder that was pretty serious and kind of boring. And now we have Blue, uh, Blue Demon, and it's actually, I don't know, kind, maybe it might be the best out of these three. Uh, Blue Demon is a cheesy shark movie that for the most part knows what it is. It has a fair bit of humor and cheese behind it, and overall the plot moved at a really steady clip, and it was pretty entertaining. Again, I, I, I don't want to oversell this movie, I don't want to say it's the best thing ever, but I will say I've been watching a ton of cheesy shark movies over the past few years, and this was definitely one of the more palatable ones. This had a good bit of humor behind it, and a good bit of levity, and it didn't always land, and it didn't always work, but, you know, overall, a yeah, fun enough B-Shark movie, and I can recommend it to the crowd that likes funny B-Shark movies. Again, don't set your hopes too high. It does have some problems, but overall, it's alright. Uh, but the problems, the, the humor, I do wish it was better. You know, you do get times where it does lean in pretty hard to the humor. Some over-the-top and cheesy music, lots of quips and one-liners, and you get a character like the General, who's really big and over-the-top and smoking his giant cigar and being, you know, very much a caricature. And a lot of times it does work. You do get moments where the humor doesn't work, like one of the scientist rep references Franz Kafka, and when he says Kafka, the guy goes, hey, don't say that, there's a lady in here. I, I, I don't know, I didn't get that. There's another joke in this movie where their boss is a dwarf, and he's giving a speech, and you just see his eyes peeking out from the top of the podium, like the government wouldn't provide him with a step stool or something. You get the kind of level of humor we're dealing with, and... And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But the thing is, we go into big, cheesy territory sometimes. Sometimes this feels like an episode of Malcolm in the Middle for a couple minutes. And then other times, it just kind of becomes a, a B-Shark movie. And I do wish this was more like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes or Sharknado. If you're going to go that big... I want it to be wacky, silly, and insane the whole time, but it does keep it up at a good enough clip. It's just not constantly over-the-top humorous, you know? It's a B-Shark movie with comedy moments, not a 100% comedy, and, you know, they go far enough. I just kind of wish they stayed there, you know? Uh, so the humor, not 100%. But the biggest thing is the PG-13 element. Uh, yeah, this movie's PG-13, and boy does it feel it. I thought it might be a TV movie or something, but, you know, you're gonna get your, your one F word, and you're gonna get awkward couple, and they're gonna go, oh, I wanna go swimming, but I forgot my swimsuit, and then they discuss skinny dipping, but this is a PG-13 movie, so even though we spent like two minutes talking about it, she's just going to actually have her swimsuit for no reason. Why did you write this scene if... I don't know. I, probably it was a remainder from an R-rated script that they just brought it over and it makes no sense. But the biggest thing with the PG-13 is the sharks. 
the shark kills aren't great, and in turn, this movie, they talk a lot about the sharks, and every now and then you see them swimming at the camera, but it's not really too much of a scary shark movie because it is rated PG-13. The kills are not great. Uh, the one that I remember the most is a shark kills a scuba diver. I think it's pretty much off screen, but you get the bubbles from his air tank and the red water, you know, red bubbles coming up. Okay, that's okay. It, the kills aren't great, nothing super gory or extreme, but not just the quality of the kills, the number of the kills. There are six sharks in this movie. You could really wreak havoc with sh uh, six sharks, but there are more shark deaths in this movie than human deaths. That should put things in perspective. A shark movie where more sharks die than humans. You messed up there. And it's weird because they do their Friday the 13th style murder vignettes, like random little side characters we never meant, that are clearly set up to be killed. Like a father-daughter going fishing, right? And the father randomly falls into the ocean and the sharks are coming and he just forgets how to swim and thrashes and begs the shark to eat him pretty much. But then the sharks don't eat him, he gets away. Why are we throwing in Friday the 13th style murder vignettes and then not murdering anybody? I strongly suspect that there was a rated R version of this and they, they got told right beforehand, you're PG-13 now, tone this down. Yeah, murder vignettes without the murder, so they're just random side plots. Cool. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the plot. No major spoilers, I just want to take a moment to analyze this further and talk more about what works and doesn't. I'll be avoiding the end, but let's dig a little deeper. We open up with the beginning scene from Joe Dante's Piranha. Yeah, it's not exactly the same, but it's teenagers sneaking into government fenced off water to go swim in it, and it's right at the beginning of the movie. You can't help but get the Piranha feel, which is kind of weird because there was Jaws, and then Piranha was a parody of Jaws, and now we're getting another Jaws parody, Kind of. It doesn't really reference Jaws, but it's part of the shark boom that happened because of it. But now it's referencing Piranha, so I'm not really sure what this chain is. But whatever, we're knocking off the opening of Piranha. These girls are from a sorority this time, and they find out, oh, the government can't afford to keep the electricity in this electric fence? Really? Is it that expensive? Uh, whatever. And they say, oh, there's a big sign that says, toxic water, keep out. We as an audience know we put in Blue Demon. The, the toxic water is a lie. It's really the sharks. The sorority girls bring the toxicity with them. But they say, jump in the lake and swim to the buoy if you want to be in our sorority house. We've all done it before. And that's a lie. They haven't done it before. And in real life, if this wasn't a shark movie, uh, this would result in her getting cancer at age 30 and leaving behind some some young kids without a mother. So, yay, sorority pranks. Jump in the toxic... Don't swim in toxic water. Uh, but anyway, this, of course, will instead result in the shark attacking the group. Um, we then cut to the scientist, the, the people working on it, and their lab looks like a children's aquarium lesson room or something. It, it's super weird. It's all painted blue and has a bunch of toys scattered around and they're playing ring toss, which will surely have a, a bearing on the plot later. I don't know what is up with this lab, but whatever. The movie's supposed to be whimsical. Uh, the two main scientists are getting a divorce uh, for some reason. We never find out why. It's just one of those happy couple randomly hates each other and now they're getting a divorce. You know, they never say, did, did he cheat on her? Was he abusive? Was one of them addicted to drugs? And no, the, the thing is, Hollywood loves the trope 
of couple that hates each other eventually falling in love and a divorced couple is a cheap vehicle for this liked plot path so that's why it's in the movie uh, anyway turns out uh, they're working on creating remote control sharks for the government and they're breeding a shark that's bigger smarter faster and can be controlled and I guess we should mention <laughs> the scene on the cover where she's lying in the water like this and the sharks are behind her actually taken from the movie but a really weird scene the guy's like hey if we're getting a divorce give me my grandmother's wedding ring back so she goes away cause it's stuck on her finger to the sharks for some reason and she tells the sharks to not get married I don't know why this scene has to take place by the sharks for any logical reason in universe, but we know that we want her in the water later. So she tries to use soap instead of ice to get the wedding ring off. And of course, for no reason, she falls in the water and everybody rushes to help her. Rushes out of the lab to stop the RC. Like... They're remote control sharks. Get on your computer and stop them. But they just run to her. But luckily there's another computer outside. You know those outside computers? Like computers, you can leave them in the rain, right? That That's fine. But then they stop the RC sharks, which they could have done in the lab. But it's just more tension if it's outside and they save her. It's not a great scene. It's clunky and messy, and a lot of the movie is, but it's a good enough visual to put it on the cover, so that's what that's about. Okay, cover was a side tangent. Uh, eventually, a general comes in, and they're presenting the project to all the higher-ups. The general, like I said, a really fun character. Big, cartoony, over-the-top. If you're going this far with a cheesy movie, this is where you should go. Uh, and the general explains things. They're using this shark to fight terrorism. Well, it's bigger, stronger, and faster, so you're using them as like an army of sharks, right? Uh, no, there are lost nuclear weapons, and they're training the sharks to swim down and, and eat them, I guess. Not what I thought you would do with a bigger, stronger, faster shark, but okay. Of course, they raise the curtains, and the sharks have escaped. And now it's a race to capture the sharks again. And it's a gang of, like, six sharks, including the leader, Red Dog, which I honestly thought they were saying Red Dawn, like the movie, until I saw it typed out, and then it's Red Dog. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Uh, but the main scientist says, we need to tell people... And the government says, no, we're covering this up. And when he says, I'm going to tell everyone anyway, he's surprised when the government locks him up. Who, who could have saw this coming? Uh, but anyway, they have to get out. They're in a race against time, and they have to stop the sharks and figure out why they got out. And it's a bit of an action comedy. It's, it's okay. Like I said, it's one of those things, it's cheesy enough, and that helps you gloss over some of the clunky plot moments, and there are clunky plot moments. So it's cheesy enough, it's fun enough, it moves at a steady enough clip. The PG-13 thing really does kind of kill it, because you can't really push the sharks as far as you want them. And I think you can get away with a little bit more in a PG-13 movie. I think they were just too afraid they'd have to re-edit it or something, so they... They swung pretty low. I just wish there were more kills and more shark action. You have a gang of six sharks. You could have some real fun with this, and they really didn't. Um, but overall, it's cheesy. I wish it was cheesier. I wish it was a, a insane comedy, and you you really don't get the feel from this DVD cover that it's going to be a cheesy movie, but, but whatever. It's fun enough. I just wish it was better. But overall... Out of all the B-Shark movies I've seen this year, it is probably one of the better ones. 
Uh, so it's okay. If you like the cheesy shark movies, this is a good enough one. It just is a little clunky and uneven. But that being said, I can still recommend it to the right crowd. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Sharks of Summer playlist for 2023. You can find my reviews for Red Water and Great White in there, as well as things like uh, the Mega Shark series. I covered the four of those. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.